Good morning. So we have lots of sayings about birds. You know, birds of a feather flock together. When a woman's pregnant, they say she's nesting. When kids leave the house, we say they're leaving the nest. And then the parents are empty nesters. And then we got to have a nest egg for retirement. And so if the birds were looking at us, say seagulls, and they're like, oh man, these humans, they've been expanding in numbers for years and taking over more and more territory. They, they must have it going on. How about we look at how they're living and we adopt their ways. So seagulls might look at their nest and be like, man, this, this nest is so small, I can barely move. You know, I can't even stretch my wings. There's no room to eat. I don't have any space to myself. Like, and then what about the kids? You know, they, they're completely unprotected from predation. And then when, we, when they try to fly, they might fall out of the nest and, and die from the, the trauma. You know, so how about, you know, let's, let's do like these humans. Let's build some walls and a floor and a ceiling and we'll enclose everything and then we'll be nice and safe and protected. And they're like, oh yeah, this is more like it. I can stretch my wings, I can move around. You know, how about, how about we bring the, uh, you know, the flight training inside, you know? No need to go outside and deal with the elements and all the, you know, predators and stuff. We'll just, we'll build like a, a treadmill and then we can run on it and walk on it. And then we'll put some, install some fans, you know, like the, the I see the humans have those infinity pools. Well, we'll build an infinity flight simulator. And so we'll have the, you know, the fans going, put up a screen to make it look like we're flying. And then we'll, we'll teach the kids to fly that way and we'll all do it indoors. And, and then we'll be safe. You know, we won't have to worry about predators or falling to our death you know and then food why you know why are we making this food thing so hard we got to go out and hunt every day risk our necks you know get wet cold tired like why don't we just bring some of the crabs and the fish indoors we'll create you know pools and we'll raise them indoor we'll call it you know, i don't know aquaculture or something you know just like the humans do and then the, we'll put the crabs and the fish in their own filth and we'll feed them you know uh, corn and uh grain or whatever you know i'm sure it'll be fine you know the food, the corn and stuff we feed to the, the crabs and the fish, we can spray it with chemicals and that'll make it grow faster. And then, but wait, you know, they're starting to, the crabs are getting sick now. Somehow they're not doing well in these little pen pools that we created for them in their own filth, you know? So let's, we'll inject them with antibiotics to try to keep them alive long enough so we can eat them. And then, you know, some other people are like, hey, we can pump them full of some steroids and growth hormones. And then the crabs will grow bigger and we'll get a higher yield. We'll be able to feed more seagulls. And, you know, that sounds like a good idea. Let's, let's do that. It's working for the humans, you know, they're spreading around the earth. And then over time, you know, it's over such a long period of time, the seagulls, you know, their wings start to get a little smaller. Their beaks start to shrink a little bit, get a little pinched and their skulls get a little smaller and their wet legs aren't quite as strong and, and their exposure to the elements isn't as, as tolerable. They can't, you know, they go fly and get in the ocean and they're like, brr, it's cold, I can't take it, you know? And then when it rains and, you know, seagulls are usually storm birds, but they go out in the storm and they're like, ah, this is terrible. I'm going back inside to the treadmill and watch some TV and, and eat some, some farm crab. You know, and then the seagulls, they start to get more health problems, you know, heart disease, they start to get cancer, they're getting diabetes, they have strokes, you know, all these, all these sedentary kind of diseases start to infect them and they, and they start to get sicker and sicker. And then, so they start to build hospitals and they, they're building labs to, to test and discover new ways of, of trying to boost the immune system. They come up with this vaccine system and, and trying to artificially, you know, inflate health. One seagull scientist discovers that the sun causes cancer. And so, oh, you know, the seagulls, they can't go out in the sun anymore. You know, got to gotta have a hat on and, and clothing, you know, got to cover up. The sun's deadly. It's dangerous. You can die, get cancer. And they develop this, this cream, this like toxic chemical lotion that blocks out the sun. And so they spread it all over their body and lather up. And then when they're done with that, they go back in the, the you know, their shelter and get in this toxic water full of fluoride and chlorine and they lather themselves up with all kinds of toxic harsh chemicals to take off the sunscreen and then they take more harsh chemicals you know so-called uh, moisturizers and put that on their body and then you know this is health this is considered taking care of the skin and taking care of the body and the, and the seagulls the population starts growing they're like ah oh, success we're winning we're doing well you know and the, and the natural crab habitats are destroyed and the crabs in the ocean are gone and there's hardly any fish and the, the wild ways of of hunting just don't really exist anymore the only way they can get food is to grow it in these pools or, or they build these giant markets and supermarkets and they pla package everything in plastic and all kinds of trash and stuff that accumulates and and in the landfills and now they got toxic dumps and 
toxic construction sites and their buildings are made of toxic stuff and but they're expanding you know they're taking over their, their numbers are going up and the other species are going down so they're winning and year after year more seagulls die of of more diseases the rate of disease keeps going up and up and up and yet somehow the population grows and what they found is that they reduced their chick mortality by bringing the chicks inside and by having all kinds of medical procedures that can keep the chicks from dying and and unnaturally extend the life of a chick and, and mortality keep it artificially down which allows the population to grow without ever asking the question is this a good idea is is the nature way inferior and the the modern seagull way superior that, that everyone living as long as possible at all costs regardless of how sick they are that's the goal is that superior to say a natural life or maybe we die when you're young. Maybe the elements take us out sometimes when you're young, yet we live a more robust and healthy life. Once the seagulls survive adolescence and grow into adults, their, their health is phenomenal. Their strength is phenomenal. Their endurance is phenomenal. Their ability to thrive in the outdoors is phenomenal. And there are many of the seagulls say, well, that's not important. That's not what counts. That's too hard. We need more pills, more injections. We gotta cut open the seagulls, do all kinds of interventions. That, that's, the, that's success, that's the key to health and longevity. The other way is, is backwards or, you know, we, we can't live that way, we can't go back. And yet there are some seagulls who remember the old ways and still live that way. And they're strong and they're healthy and they're calm and they're relaxed and they have a tolerance for each other and for nature and remember how to get along with each other and survive in the wild and live within their means and protect the environment around them to live in harmony with the other animals, even the ones they eat. And they often hang their heads in sadness and despair at seeing the new ways and, and the madness and the, the self-destructive cycle. And yet they're hopeful. They hold on and keep making a case for the old ways, hoping that someday there'll be a, an awakening and people will start turning to them again to start asking them how, how to live in a good way and, and how to reclaim their birthright of health and strength and feeling good in harmony with each other and with all the beings on the planet. So thanks for watching.